I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to all of our brothers and sisters out there, amen, in the land that are, that are listening and looking, amen. We thank God for your presence here with the Historical First Baptist Church family. Today's message, amen, is centered around uh, a, a life of being overwhelmed. Have you ever been overwhelmed or maybe you are overwhelmed now in your life? Uh, I, uh, I encourage you, you to draw on a word from God, if you will, amen. With all of the things that are going on in our world today, I know things can be overwhelmed. You, uh, family can overwhelm you. Your faith or church situation can overwhelm you. Your finances can overwhelm you. All the things that, that, uh, that can come close to you in your life can overwhelm you if you allow it if you allow it to. But if you have a word from God, if you have a word from God that, that relates to your situation, I promise you in this life, things can and will get better for you. To be overwhelmed, we take a scene out of the Bible when the children of Israel, amen, has just been released, amen, from the uh, Egypt nation, amen. Pharaoh have let God's people go, Amen. And now the children of Israel are on their way out of Egypt. Egypt is considered a world type view in the Bible. So we look at what goes on in Egypt is also what's going on in our world today. And what God is actually trying to do with our spiritual life is to pull us and to save us from this world. So we see the preview in the life of the Israelites as God pull them out of Egypt, their world, amen, for some uh, uh, many years that they've been in Egypt, amen. And as they come out of Egypt, God gives them a word by telling them that he is going to lead them into a land uh, that is going to be flowing with milk and, milk and honey, just like, you know, uh, uh, Canaan, if you will. So let's go, amen, into our scriptures. The 14th chapter and verse 10 reads like this. New King James Version of your Bible, if you will. It says, and when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, my Lord. Life, amen, for the children of Israel is centered around uh, an overwhelming situation, amen. This overwhelming situation is that God told them to come out. They were so happy that they came out, amen, of Egypt, uh, of Egypt and they just trusted Moses all the way until they recognized, Lord have mercy, that Pharaoh has changed his mind, amen. What do you do when, you're, when, the, when your enemies change their mind about you? What do you do, amen? What do you do when, amen, all of a sudden your enemies say, I'm through with you, we got to pack, you go home, going on your way, I'm going to go on my way. Have you ever made a deal with the devil that if, you, uh, if uh, he would leave you alone, <laughs> you would leave him alone? It was almost something like of that defect. But what happens after you make that pact with the devil, and then all of a sudden the devil changes his mind and he comes after you all the more. And this is exactly what happened. Uh, Pharaoh charged after uh, the children of Israel right there in the wilderness, and they looked behind them and saw that the enemy was fastly approaching. But then they looked to the right, then they looked to the left, and bless my soul, Lord, have mercy, the enemy was fast approaching. They looked around and they saw that their situation was overwhelming. Verse 10, if you will, goes on to talk about, amen, uh, goes on to talk about when Pharaoh draws near. There's time in your life when the enemy will come back at you. The enemy don't ever want to let you go. The enemy all wants, always wants to show up God, always want to destroy your testimony and, destru and destroy your trust that you have in God. I want you to be able to know that God loves you and he put a word on your life 
amen, as, de as the devil has put a, a, uh, uh, a uh, what you call those things, a, a warrant out for your arrest, God has already sent forth, amen, the papers to set you free. When God puts a promise in your life, you can trust that promise, you can obey that promise, and I rest assured that, uh, that God would hold up and own up to the promise. What was the promise? God said that you're going to get to Canaan. So it doesn't matter how many times the enemy draws near to your life, you're going to get to Canaan. Also in verse 10, we see it says, so they were very afraid. Why are you fearful? If you got a word from God, amen, why would you be afraid? Let us learn to trust God, amen, when we don't understand the situation that we are in. Not only that, in verse 10, check out this, amen. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, amen. That's one thing that we wished, I wished as a pastor, teacher, and leader, that the people who were going through or being overwhelmed by Satan the devil would learn to cry out, not to the pastor, learn to cry out, not to some other people in our life. Do you know that we have cried out to our friends and they have never helped us? The only thing that they ever did was took our situation further by putting it on the wings of the morning. We must learn to trust God, amen, and we must learn that when we get in trouble, the first person that we cry out to is the Lord. Hallelujah. In verse 11, if you will, look at this. Then they said to Moses, Look at verse 12, if you will. Then they said to Moses, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians. Lord have mercy. Do you see that? Amen. Here it is. Amen. That Moses, they cried out to the leader and they give Moses the bad news. They tell Moses by way of a testimony that it is better for us to have stayed with the Egyptians. Let me ask you something. Out of all the hell that you've been through, do you ever want to go back? Do you ever want to deal with the situations in your life that God has already pulled you out of? Let me tell you something. Satan always wants to bind you. Satan always wants to keep you, amen, in a box where you can never get past. We call it a stronghold. Amen. Do you know the only way that you can get out of a stronghold is that truth has got to come in? Because a stronghold is a hole that blocks truth. It's a hedge that you're around. It's a barrier that you are around that nothing can get in. And everything that Satan puts in, that's what you believe. That's what you see. That's what you know. Well, Satan's uh, idea is that he don't ever want to get you loose from the mindset of negativity, amen? So that's dangerous to be in a mindset where you feel like that you can never get out of. But here's the children of Israel is wishing that they can go back into a stronghold in which Jesus, God himself, has bought them out of. Learn to trust God even when the enemy is in close proximity, amen? Amen. God bless you. Look at verse 13. Let's look at that. It says, it says in verse 13, they said, do not be afraid, as Moses was saying. Notice what the Lord tells them. Go forward. Keep marching. When God brings you out of a situation, one of the main, main things that you must do is do what? Go forward. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. He has set your path to go forward. You know, he is the way now. He is the way, the truth, and the light. When we go God's way, regardless of what's on the right of us, regardless of what's on the left of us, we must trust God. Do you remember when God, when Christ was on the cross, he was where? He was in the middle. He was in the middle of the cross. There was a thief on the right, and there was a thief on the left. But he was in his way. Christ was in his way on Calvary, getting ready to die. As he was getting ready to die, he had already been scourged. He had already been abused by the soldiers. He is already a bloody mess. He can't hardly breathe, but he looks over to the right side of him and he sees 
a man that needed saving. In the midst of Jesus' overwhelming uh, abuse that he received, he stops, press pause, and gets a man into heaven while he's on his way to the grave. What a mighty God we serve. We must trust him even when we can't trace him. So if God paints a picture for us that when we are overwhelmed in our life, we can get through it if we have a word. Let's go in through our first note, if you don't mind. How do we overcome, my brothers and sisters, how do we overcome, amen, when we are overwhelmed, amen? Number one, this is the one thing that we need to do. We need to keep our feet in the way of God. We need to keep our feet in the way of God. Well, well, Pastor, what is the way of God? When you say, what is the way of God, how do we keep our feet in the way of God? Number one is that, amen, the way of God is forward. I'm not going nowhere but forward. I'm moving forward. That's the way of God. Amen. The dogs are barking. The wolves are howling. My enemies are gnashing their teeth at me. Guess what? I'm moving forward. I may be hurting, but I'm going forward. I may not understand what's going on in my life, but I'm going forward. Why don't you say it with me? I'm moving forward. The, when you keep your face locked into the way of God, I promise you things will work out for you. Not only do you keep your feet in the way of God, amen, but you also, if you will, Lord have mercy, uh, separate the more that you move forward from God, from Egypt, separates you from the situation of where you've been. The way of separation from Egypt. Christ's way, God's way, is the way of separation from the evil one. Anything that is in our life, Amen. That are keeping us from moving forward is a weight. Amen. I heard it in the in the Bible. The Bible scripture tells us that we must cast every weight that is so uh, and sin that is so easily beset us. We must pull those things off because they keep us, they hold us back, and in some instances keep us from moving forward. So we know that the way of God separates us from Egypt. And the way of God consecrates us to Canaan. Amen. The more that we keep going forward in God's way, the more God will have, amen, to put on our hearts and our mind about where we're headed. I don't know about you, but one of these days I'm headed to heaven. You may ask me, Smith, where is heaven? Let me tell you, wherever God is, that's where I want to be. Wherever God is, whatever he's doing in our lives, that's where I want to be. I'm trusting God that he is going to get me to where I need to be. But until I get there, my way is forward. Holler way forward. Go on and do that for me. Amen. How do we overcome when we are overwhelmed? I got one more for you. Check this one out. Amen. Uh, keep your faith in the word of God your feet in the way of God, now your faith in the word of God. Do you know our faith is connected, is the power source to the word of God? Because without the word of God, there is no real faith. We must understand that God wants us to trust him all the way down to every jot and tittle, tittle that the Bible puts, uh, puts together. We must understand what the Bible and what the Bible is saying to us today. It's not enough that we go to church and just get a nugget when God wants us to live in the cave uh, of eternal life. Don't just grab nuggets and then go out and live your life thinking that that nugget is going to help you get through. God wants us in the cave. God wants us in his word. The word of God is true. We must believe and act as if 
what God has said to us that he is telling the truth. We must live our life every day out of the principles of the word of God. I did set principles because I know that the Bible has been written many, 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 many years ago, long before I ever came on the scene. But the thing about it is, it doesn't matter when it was it written. What, it, what means most is that do I believe what is written in the text? We must understand the word of God, just like we go to college for four years, eight years, amen, trying to get that degree and everything so that we can still get a knowledge, amen, so that I can get a better job or live a better life as some people, where the word of God is just like that. But you must spend a lifetime in the word of God, amen. You must understand the principles in which God has has put before us, and we, then we must allow the word of God to be a blessing unto us. Why? Because if the word of God is not established in our life, Christ or the Bible teaches us that apostasy will come in. When we are overwhelmed sometimes, apostasy will come where people will leave us. Amen. The Bible teaches us by way of a principle that apostasy is prevalent. Some shall depart the faith, just like some disciples left Jesus, walked away from him after they, they, they couldn't understand the real ways and, 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 and uh, principles for the life. My brothers and sisters, until we learn that Jesus Christ is who he say he is, and until we adjust our lives to the way we, he wants us to live, then we are not riding on good tires, spiritual tires. Do you know when you drive your car, Lord have mercy, that when one tire, amen, wears out where the other tire is still rolling pretty good, you know what they call that in the, uh, in the uh, uh, mechanic world, auto mechanic world? They call that you're on, out of an alignment, amen, out of alignment, amen, meaning that all of your tires not flowing in the same perspective. Lord have mercy. And that's what happened in our lives sometime. In this life, this pandemic can get us out of line. Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, your children, your finances, your jobs, Lord have mercy, can all wear on us and so to a point where we still believe in God, but we are woe out, amen, on one of our tithes. And how many tithes do you think it takes for a car to go on a flat? That's right, one tie. Amen. And I just believe that on our journey of going forward, some of us have gotten out of line, gotten out of line with God. Amen. It's time for us to restructure ourselves, renew ourselves, replenish ourselves. Amen. And redesign ourselves to God's view, God's way, so that we could be able to reach out and do the wills and ways of God. I hope, amen, that this lesson is, is showing you, amen, number one, that we need to always keep our feet in the way of God, and then we need to always keep our faith, amen, in the word of God. And the answer to all of our problems that we will have, amen, is the promise of God. God gives us a great promise, amen. Abraham was 100 years old when his promise came through, and Sarah was 90, amen, and they were going through an overwhelming obstacle, amen. What happened is that God came down and told them that he was going to produce a child through Abraham and Sarah, amen, and Abraham and Sarah thought that God had forgot about them, and all of a sudden, Sarah came up with an idea, why don't you go into one of my handmaids, why don't y'all sleep together and impregnate her, and we create our own child, and maybe that's what God want us to do. They out of line, oh Lord, they out of line, and they got out of line, and the reason that God waited till they got to an old age, so that the proving of God's word can be Surely a test, uh, a, a test uh, that God's word is true. So here's a 100-year-old man and here's a 90-year-old woman, Lord have mercy, uh, having a baby. Uh, and that was the promise that God had designed their bodies to be. So that's why we can't get out of line. That's why we can't have flats 
amen, we must, amen, wait on God's promise uh, uh, in the midst of being overwhelmed. How do we be overwhelmed? Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus. Number three, keep your face in the will of God. In verse 13, and Moses said unto the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he has accomplished for you this day. Lord, have mercy. All we have to do is just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, notice what he tells them to do. Stand still. First of all, take notice. Take a stand. We are too wishy-washy. Stand still means to stand firm. Amen. We too wish to watch. We go back this way. We go that way. Let us learn to trust God and believe in God and honor God even when things are not going our way. In the story of Job, Job, regardless, the Bible said, to all of the hell that he was, went through and the overwhelming circumstances that came Job's way, what did Job do? Job learned to trust God. And one thing that he never did he never cursed God, and he never stopped believing in God, but he always wondered why was he going through such an ordeal. My question has been for some time in the church and to the believers that are listening to me today, amen, can God trust you with trouble? Can God trust you with turbulence? Can God trust you with a trial? Amen. Can God trust you with these things that are going on? in your lives that you may be able to draw closer to him. Remember, God gave you a word. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I want you during this pandemic not to stop on God. I want you during this pandemic not to give up on God. <clears throat> Don't stop paying your tithe. Don't start, amen, sending in your support to the word and, 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 and to the church because God has a promise not just for you, but he has a promise for everything that is connected to him. And uh, the idea is that God wants us to get to, our, to the, uh, our full potential in our spiritual lives. And the only way to do that is to continue to move forward by keeping our feet in his way and by keeping our faith in his word. And Lord have mercy, by keeping our face in his will. His will for our life is drawn on many circumstances. Number three, keep your faith in the will of God. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus in Luke 9 and 51 says this, and he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. That's one thing that I need you to understand, that in this life, amen, that we have great examples through the life of Jesus Christ. As Jesus Christ was headed to Jerusalem, you know where he was going to Jerusalem? He was going to Jerusalem <clears throat> to, uh, to face up with what he had to overcome. Amen. And, and that is he set his face, amen, to the sacrifice that he was about to partake on. Amen. You know, if it had been you and me, amen, you know, we would have delayed a couple of times. You know, we would have probably stayed over and then act like we forgot. Oh, I was supposed to go to Jerusalem. No, no. Jesus set his face, kept the time with the Lord. There's a timing mechanism on all of our lives. Amen. And I wonder how some of you used up your time. You're 60, you're 70, you're 80. You're almost 90 years old, and you still have not accomplished that purpose that God has put you here for. Hallelujah. Praise God. You have done everything that you wanted to do. You've been to the college you wanted to go to. You've been to the military and did what you wanted to do. You, uh, uh, you graduated. You retired. You lived your life to the poten full potential. You didn't went been to the beach. You didn't been to the cruise. You 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 didn't done all the things that you want to do. But time is winding up on you, my beloved. My God, when are you gonna set your face to do the thing that God has purposed for you to do? My God, why don't you come on and just trust God today? 
Why don't you just follow him? Set your face, amen, toward your Jerusalem. Why? Because God's way is forward. Amen. Amen. He steadfastly set his face to Jerusalem to meet. What did he go to meet? The cross, the darkness, and the thirsting of Calvary. That's what he did. That's what he did. Lord, have mercy. My brothers and sisters, there's nothing on this here slide right here, but I guess I'm just talking. <laughs> I'm going to punch it one more time. Hello. To overcome <laughs> when you are overwhelmed, these are some things that you must do in your spiritual life. Set your target. Set your goal. Set your uh, objective and move forward. That's what needs to be put there. And move forward. Amen. If you move forward in your life, amen, don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. And please, Lord, have mercy. Don't look backwards, amen, at how close your enemy is. Let me tell you how close your enemy is. Lisa, your enemy is just as close as the crack in the door. The Bible says, sin lieth at the door. Amen. So when you open that door, that sin, that devil is right there. That's how close he is. But guess what? He can't bother you. Why? Because you got a promise. You're headed to Canaan. You're headed to the promise which God has promised your life. And guess what? You'll never be able to get there by being overwhelmed. I trust that this message will find you in a blessed situation and will cause you one day, to light, or even right now, to look up. Tell God, thank you. Be blessed today. We'll talk to you later. See you.